Hey guys, Omerko here, Happy New Year! I made a poll in the last year and I asked you what would you prefer for me to, well, to be my next video and you actually wanted to have a JSON crash course. So here we are, in this video we will take a look at basics and also the syntax of JSON. We will also handle a bit of errors there as well. But in this video we want to do just that. We will actually use this in a kind of real-life situation. You will see how the JSON is used to transmit data between clients. So we will get that data locally and we will actually show that data on our screen in this small dummy project that we will build. Before we start with that, just be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as there will be much more videos on web development in this year. Let's talk about the JSON basics. First of all, what is JSON? Well, JSON or JavaScript object notation is probably one of the most important concepts that we need to learn as web developers. The reason for that, well, it is the format that is being used for JSON. It is used to store and transmit data between users, which means that it will transmit data between client and the server side. It is also highly used and it is used by leaders in the industry like MongoDB or Firebase. And the main reason for that is, well, it is human readable, which means that we don't really need to know web development to read JSON code. And as it is human readable, it means that it is also easy to write, store and pass information with it. One important thing to mention here is that most of the languages today have their own methodology to use JSON. So, for example, we have parse method in JavaScript to parse JSON information, well, JSON data. And yes, whatever we use in JSON, we can use in JavaScript because JSON syntax is very similar to JavaScript syntax. And whichever object we write in JSON, it is fully readable and we can fully work with such object in JavaScript. Now that I mentioned that JSON syntax, well, we can start using it. And for that, we will write some code with it. First of all, to write the JSON, we need to create a JSON file. And for that here, I will create user.json. Be sure to use that JSON at the end so it is recognizable as a JSON file. So here we have offered to write our data in two different ways. For example, we can store our data in arrays. So this can be the arrays, the array of objects, or simply we can store our data in an object. So we will have one object here. And as this here is the user file, I will actually write just one object here with some dummy data inside. So first of all, how we write JSON data, JSON code. Well, JSON is split into two parts. We have a key and the value for that key. And this part here is quite recognizable in web development. Well, in most languages out there, JavaScript also uses the same syntax to write its own objects or arrays. So for example, we will have a key here and it is important that this key is wrapped with double quotes. And after this key, we will use colon and then the value for such key here. So as I'm trying to write here the user data, I can actually specify the key. For example, full name, well, full name of the user. So this here is a key and this here is that property that we will target to get the data and that data or the value of this key should be stored on the right side of this one property, which is, well, here for us, it will be John Doe, for example. So our user has a full name of John Doe. Now here you can also see that this, this value here is actually a string. And next to a string, JSON will support, well, all of those basic types, usual types that we use, like strings, numbers, booleans, and you already saw that it does support objects and arrays. So here next to full name, I wish to add another property to my user, for example. So I will use comma, and it is important to use comma after each property that you add. So here, again, I will specify the key, and this one will be age, age of the user. So here for this age, I will set the value to be 25. And keep in mind, this value, the type of this value is a number, 
and now not a string. So another property here for me could be is married. So is this user married? I will set here false, which means that we are able also to pass Boolean values in this JSON object. So I will set another value here, well, another key, first of all, called hobbies. And what I can do, I will set this to be an array instead of just a simple value. So for the hobbies, I will pass two hobbies. Here I will pass reading, and then I will pass gaming. So these are two hobbies that this user has. Now, I will also quickly show you the often errors that we can encounter in JSON. You should keep in mind that JSON is very strict about its syntax. So if you make any mistakes or, well, it will just cause the error. So for example, if I use comma here, but after this property, I don't add a new property down below, it will just stay as an error. And that means the whole file, the whole JSON file won't work in this moment. But my Visual Studio code is quite good. It always catches those errors. So it is really hard to not write good JSON. Also, if I add here one property of, let's say, uh, owns uh, a car. So if this user owns a car, I need to use comma here. So here, this will also show an error because this is just the key without its value. So here we can see that it ex expects a colon. So it expects a colon here so it can pass a value on the right side. So I will just remove this property because I won't need it. But this is pretty much it. This is that basic syntax covered here. And you can see that it is really easy to use JSON. And as I mentioned, this here is human readable. So even if you are not experienced in web development or any other scripting or programming language, it is really easy to read this JSON. So you can obviously see what is the key and what is the value. And we specify the keys here and we specify the values. And that is why it is also really easy to read it because full name as a key, we all know what it means. So it is quite easy to pass data, transmit data from user to user. But now with this syntax, you don't know much with it. I mentioned that it can be used in a bunch of different programming languages. And to be honest, I wanted to create a small project where we will actually get this data from this JSON file in a JavaScript and show all of that data on a screen. So first of all, let's work on fetching this JSON data. And to do that, I will actually do that in JavaScript. So here I will create a new file called app that JS. So how can we get this data from a user JSON file? So here I will first put the comment that we are trying to get user data. And now that I have this comment below, I could add some functionality to get this user data from our JSON file. In JavaScript, we have this nice method called fetch. And this is mostly used to point to some APIs to get the data back or to post some data, save that data in some database, for example. Well, that data that is being transmitted is actually the JSON data, which means that we can just point here to our JSON file and get JSON data back. So here I will point to my user that JSON file. Now this fetch method will actually return promise to me, which means that I can use then on it to do something with the data that we get back. So the response that we get back from our user.json file, so we are getting here response. Well, this response is not very helpful to us. It won't actually hold this JSON data, but it will hold this blob of different things as well. So what I will do here, I will use response.json method on it, which means that it will pull the JSON data for us here. And after that, again, it will return promise here, which means that we can chain another then method. And here now we will actually get our data. So when we have our data, we can do something with that data as well. For example, I will console.log my data here and we can do something with it. First of all, let's check this data. So to check my data here, I will obviously need some page. So for that, let's create quickly index.html file here. 
because I won't bother you much with this HTML code and JavaScript code, I will just paste some content here, it will be much faster. It is just a simple HTML file with the title of user details, because we are creating such a dummy project, we can call it like that. And here below, I am importing my script of my app.js file, which means that it should run this code, which will actually get us the data from our user.json. So here, let's run this HTML file. So now actually in my HTML, if I open up my console, and for you who don't know, you can just right click on your page, go inspect here, and it will open up the console here, probably in the elements tab, but you can route yourself to the console tab, and there you should see your log with the data and all of the information below. So for us here, you can see that we actually pulled that data from our user.json. So you saw in action that JSON file, how it can store data and how easy it is to actually use that JSON data wherever we wish. We can now just use this data and show something on our screen, which we will do now. So for example, I will go back into my code, well, specifically JavaScript file that we have. So in this file, I wish to store this data somewhere. So at the top of this file here, I will paste user details. This is just the variable that will be used to store our data. Now to store such data instead of this console log here, I will actually use my user details. And to that, I will pass my data that we are getting back. Well, our JSON file. And because now we do have that JSON data stored locally here, we can do something with it. And as I said, I wish to create some content on my screen. So for that, I will paste a bit of code here. And first of all, we will create the container element. This will be just the div with the specific class assigned to it. So we can easier, easier target it for styling and also to import the data actually into this div to present it on a screen. Now, this div should have some headings, so down below I will paste, paste more lines where I'm creating my heading, it will be h2 element. I'm also passing the user details as a title, title to that heading. As you know, I already used that same title for the page title. And here I will append that child, which means that I am grabbing this heading and I will add that heading inside of my container, which is our div. Now, because we have this JSON data, it will be useful to show those data, that data actually as a list. So here I will create such element as well. So I'm creating here a list element, which will just be an ordered list. And as you know, the JSON data is just different values. We have object with different values. Well, those will include keys and values for those keys. And as this here is the object, we can actually use loop to the object itself. And JavaScript has some nice functionality to do that. So here I will paste a bit more of code and we can see here that uh, I'm using object and I'm looping through the entries of such object. The object for us here is user details and for each element inside. So each key that we have and its own value. So here we do have the key and the value for such key. So what are we doing? Well, for each of those, we will actually create one list item and that item will hold a specific text content inside, which will hold the key and the value again, which means that as we see this uh, property here in our JSON, it will be presented on our website in the same way. And at the bottom, we will just append that child, well, append that list item to our list, which is our unordered list item. Now, what we should do is actually append this list to our container and append the whole container to the actual HTML, to the body element of our HTML. So to do that, below I will paste more content. So here we are appending the list to the container and here we will append the whole container to the body of our document, of our HTML content. Now, after this, I will also add the styling. We can do that here in JavaScript, but I will go into my HTML and right after the title, I will use style HTML uh, element. And here I will just paste some styling. So we will target our user details. We will style those a bit, put those in center. We will style our heading. 
we choose this element here to look as a heading, as a proper heading, we will style our unordered list and each list item to be one below another with a bit of spacing between uh, the elements. And at this moment, this is what we have on our screen. If I close my console here, zoom out, zoom in a bit, we can see our title. This is obviously our container and inside we do have our details, our data, our JSON. So based on this, you saw how easy it is to store the data in JSON. Also, if you use some kind of database like MongoDB, that database will also store the data in JSON as well. So you will be able to store data and get data from that database. And you can do something with that data as we did here. We just show the data on a screen, but let's just imagine that you actually have similar data stored in some kind of a database and you are getting the property of is married false. So here, instead of the false value, what we could actually do is maybe show the icon of a single person. Maybe here where we have different hobbies like reading and gaming, we could show different icons like, uh, well, book or a laptop or something like that. Now with that, we are actually finished with this JSON crash course, even though the whole video is quite short. But we were able to take a look into the basics of JSON also its syntax, and we saw some of the errors that could occur while writing JSON. Next to that, we were able to use JSON in sort of real life example, where we were able to fetch the JSON data and show that JSON data on a screen. Now with that, you are not blocked by using JSON in any other programming language. We specifically used JavaScript in this video, but feel free to use any other language with JSON format. Also, I would like to encourage you to ask additional questions if you have any, and I will be sure to answer you down in the comments of this video. Also, before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe, as I plan to publish much more content in this year as well. Thank you all once again, and I will see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.